All right, welcome to another yoga class. And today we're going to be focusing on a lot of hamstring stretches, getting into the glutes as well. So please, if you've got any medical issues, check with your practitioner that it's safe for you to do a yoga practice. Don't do anything that doesn't feel right for your body. So you're free to come out of postures at any time and you know, be aware that you're doing this in your own home uh, at your own risk. So be mindful, be careful, look after yourself. All right, so what you might need is a strap because of a lot of leg, leg stretches. And I also have two bricks, but if you haven't got two bricks, you could also use uh, a chair or um, you know, a couple of big books or something to put the hands on. And uh, we're gonna get started by lying down. So if you can get comfortable on your backs. And keep the knees bent to start with. Just slightly lift the hips up tilt the pelvis so the pubic bone is moving a little bit more towards the navel and we're feeling that lower back in contact with the floor and then if we can rotate the palms up and release the shoulders down and have a little play with the head and it's a chin up that's a little bit too much chin in a little bit too much we want to find that happy middle ground where I've got space behind my neck but a nice open throat at the front and then from here, perhaps bringing the feet together and then we'll let the knees come out to the sides into our bound angle pose. But if that doesn't feel good, again, you can just keep the knees bent or extend the legs out all the way. So we'll, we'll focus on our breath. So we're breathing through our nose, expanding into the belly on the breath in. And then on the exhale, allowing this belly to soften, letting that breath just release from the body. So conscious, slow, deep breathing. And seeing if we can not only take that breath down to the belly, but also let it broaden into the ribs. Couple more breaths. And on that last exhalation, can we think of trying to let the muscles relax as much as possible? So observing on that exhale, if there's any tension that we can let go of in the body. So bringing the knees back towards each other, feet flat on the floor. And then from here, we're going to do a conscious little contraction of our back muscles. So as I breathe in, I'm going to arch into my spine. You can see I can slide a hand underneath that lower back area. And then on the exhale, consciously relax the back to the floor. And we'll do that one more time, breathing in. Creating that little arch in the back muscles, feeling the strength, and then on the exhale, release and soften back to floor. So if our back muscles are tight, that's gonna impact the stretching that we're about to do through our legs. So I'm gonna ask you to focus not just on the hamstring stretches, but also trying to relax and soften into these lower back muscles as well. So if you can grab your strap, and we're going to place it around the right foot, just below the toes. So I've got it on the ball of the foot there. And then we're going to extend that right leg. Keeping this left leg nice and relaxed. So I'm, I've got the knee bent. It's just a little kinder on the back and we should be able to feel the pelvis really heavy on the floor there. So first of all, we want to check that the positioning of the knee is towards the right shoulder. So just make sure you haven't rotated the toes across or the knee across to the left shoulder. So kneecap facing right shoulder. And then check that your hands are going to be comfortable. So if, because we're 
working quite intensively today. We're going to hold this for a while. You might find your hands get quite tired. So you may want to roll the strap around the hands and just let them hang. Some people like to let their elbows rest on the floor. That's fine as well. I quite like the weight of the arms, just assisting me a little bit more with that stretch. So we're ideally trying to get this right leg straight. And for those who are hypermobile, just watch that you're not sort of over straightening and, and locking back into the knee joint there. And if you're struggling to you know, get the leg straight, bring the leg lower. So it's all right if, you, if you're down here, that's just what your natural range might be. For some of you, if you're really flexible, it might be more over the head, but we are trying to get a, a relatively straight leg. Okay, so hopefully, once you've found that straight leg position, you're noticing a bit of an opening in the back of the leg here. It could be in the buttocks as well. You might feel it in the back of the calves. That's all good. We're going to create tension to notice what muscles feel like when they're tight and then we're going to try and release it on the exhale. So let's take a breath in and I want you to push the foot against the strap and tighten up that right leg. Make sure you're not pushing through your left foot. Notice how the back also tightens up. So we're going to exhale. Now relax the leg muscles, relax the buttock muscles, relax the back and you might find your right leg naturally wants to come a little closer. It can still be a sensation, a stretch, but we're trying to release any tension. So we're gonna do that one more time. Breathing in, push the foot against the strap. So we're putting a bit of resistance there, feeling the muscles that tighten up. So it's back, buttocks, legs. Now relax it, soften it, let it go. And release. And we should be feeling a nice opening through the back of the leg there. So another thing that can help us open up these hamstring muscles is tightening the opposite muscle groups. So these big quad muscles at the front of the thigh, we're gonna draw those up. So think of lifting this kneecap, firming it, and I'm thinking about the front of my thigh pushing towards the back of the hamstring. So the more I keep this firm, the more it's gonna send a message to these muscles at the back there to relax a little bit more. And then on the next exhale, we're going to extend the left leg out now. So this will add a little bit more to our extension. And I've got my left leg quite active. So left thigh drawing to the ground, pushing out through the ball of the foot. So I haven't got my foot sort of relaxed. And we're just enjoying this sensation, hopefully. If you find that you're starting to get the shakes a little bit, back it off. So usually when the muscles start to quiver and shake, they're getting overstressed and you need to ease it off a little bit. Because when they get, you know, that, that shaking action, they're, they're resisting the stretch, they're not gonna stretch anymore. So just let it go, soften. Be happy wherever you get to. Focus back on the breath and check that you're not adding tension to your face. So you want a relaxed smile, if possible, soft eyes, easy breath. And then the best bit is we're gonna bend the left knee and you might find now that that, oh, that feels a little bit easier. So maybe you can take up a little bit more stretch. So we'll do that. Find a new position. Check that you're not letting the buttocks sort of push off the floor though. So try and keep the sacrum in connection with the ground. Now from here, we're gonna go a little deeper into the glute muscles and working the lower back as well. So if we can slightly rotate this whole right leg to the right, so my kneecap is pointing a little bit more off to the side, and then we're gonna bend the knee. I'm still trying to keep my heel over my knee joint and you might be able to reach up and hold on to your foot but if you can't just stay with the strap is fine or you could also hold behind the back of the leg if you can reach. We're going to let the left knee relax over to the left side 
so that we're keeping this pelvis level on the floor. Now if you can reach, feel free to take off that strap. And I'm drawing my knee a little closer to the floor and my thighs are not resting on my rib cage. They're actually going a little bit off to the side there. The foot is flat towards the ceiling. I've still got my heel directly over my knee joint. And then I'll see if I can relax my right shoulder towards the floor as well. So hopefully you're now feeling it's a little bit more in your buttock muscles. Now you can stay here, you can always come out and rest. Or if you want, see how it feels. On the exhale, we're going to re-extend through that left leg. And if it feels like it's too much, just bend the knee again. But I'm trying to actively draw my left thigh back to the floor as I keep drawing my right thigh towards the ground as well. And this is a, a big, big opening. I come back to my breath. Checking in, am I holding on to tension in the face that I don't need to? And as we stay with this for a moment, observe the thought processes. So what's the mind telling you? And sometimes it finds it really hard just be still and stay with that sensation. Now we'll come out slow, so we're going to slide the left foot in and then releasing that right foot back down to the ground and then slide both legs out along the floor and observe what are you feeling in the right side to the left side? There should be, hopefully, a sense of length and flatness in that right leg as opposed to the left. Okay, let's shake it out. So let's find our strap. We're going to bend both knees and take the strap around our left foot, just below the toes there on the ball of the foot. So I'm not going into, you know, my full stretch. I'm just working at, at finding that comfortable position. Maybe wrap the strap around the hands or rest the elbows on the floor. Check that your kneecap is facing your left shoulder. And then once you've got all of those positions set up, the next thing is to Make sure that the leg is straight, but not overextending. All right, then from here, I come to a point, I'm looking to feel the edge of the stretch. So, you know, for me, that's a little bit too comfortable. Over here is just a little bit too much. I, I wanna find, you know, I'm getting a good sensation. Okay, once I've found that, I'm going to stay with that, get comfy, think of the thigh bone dropping into the hip joint and then we'll work with that tension. So we're going to take a breath in and push the foot against the strap, tighten up all those leg muscles, don't press too hard through the right leg and then on the exhale relax, soften. It may come a little closer, it may not. All right, breathing in, tighten up through the leg muscles, the back muscles, the glutes, you'll find those all are kicking in. Hold it nice and strong. Exhale, soften. Maybe we get a little bit more out of the stretch. And then we stay with this. So checking that we can really relax into the back, into the buttocks. And then from here, We'll extend that right leg out along the floor. So going a little bit further into our stretch. And we're using these thigh muscles now, drawing up, and the thigh is thinking of moving towards that hamstring. So pressing back. Stay. 
staying with it just a little bit longer. What's the mind doing? Is it wandering? Can we draw it back to the sensation in the breath? And then keeping the left leg where it is, slide the right foot back in and you'll find that we can take up a little bit more stretch now. So let's do that. But keep the tailbone on the ground. Stay with it. Now we're gonna rotate the left knee slightly out to the side and then we'll start to bend the knee. So maybe reaching up, holding onto the foot or holding behind the back of the leg or staying with the strap. And then we'll let that right knee just relax a little bit out to the right side. So notice how my knee's off to the side. I haven't got my thigh on my ribs. I'm avoiding pressing down on the rib cage, but I've still got my heel over my knee joint. The sole of the foot's facing the ceiling. And then final bit, can I relax my left shoulder down a little bit more or take me deeper into the stretch? And see if we can soften into those buttock muscles where we're opening up into that lower back. So this can be quite a nice stretch opening for the sciatic muscles. If you want, slide that right leg away. And now we're in our full stretch. So this is really opening up. I'm pressing my right thigh to the floor. Again, I come back to my breath awareness making sure it's not up here in the chest, but I'm moving it into the belly. And I've got a soft face. So no gritting the teeth, if you can help it. Soften those eyes. Relax into the breath. And just observe where those uh, thought processes are taking you, whether it's a, um, you know, saying, God, I've had enough of this, I wanna come out, or whether you can sort of stay relaxed and calm with the different sensations without too much judgment. Now we're gonna come out nice and slow. So sliding that right foot back in, gently release the left leg down, and then we'll take both legs out along the floor and observe. So both sides should feel a little bit more even now than when we had just done one side. And then we'll shake that out. Nice, so big hamstring stretch. Let's take both knees in towards the chest, hands around the knees. Go for a nice little rock side to side. And then we're going to roll all the way over to come up to um, hands and knees. And we're going Okay, so lunging, this is going to work our hip flexors and our um, a little bit more extension through the thighs as well. So we'll step the right foot up towards the hands. And from here, I want to make sure that when I ease forwards with the hips, that my left hip is in front of my knee, so not directly over the top. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the stretch I want in that left thigh and hip flexor. So I take a nice big step forwards and then once I've moved my hips forwards, you can see my knee is now over my ankle. So if you've got your knee going past, just take that foot a little further in front. Now you may wanna have your hands up on bricks or you might be perfectly happy having your hands on the floor, whatever you're comfortable with. And then from here, 
as I hold this stretch, I'm thinking of my right hip easing back. And as I take the right hip back, then my left hip goes a little deeper into that opening. So let's press down through the front foot and the back knee. I'm going to breathe in and then take the arms out. Nice little heart opener. Rotate the palms up. Elbows are soft, but I'm still moving forwards with my hips. I'm holding that stretch. Breathe into the chest, into the ribs. And then we'll bring the hands back down. And then from here, where your front foot is, we're going to slide it back a whole foot. So where my heel is, I'm now going to place my toes. So this is a shorter lunge, but the intention is we're going to look for a little stretch in the calf here and the Achilles heel. So now we're going to let the knee travel over the toes, but I want you to support your weight through your hands. So either on the bricks or on the floor, so it's not going all through the leg, but ideally what I'm looking for is this little extra opening in the back of the calf. So we hold that. And then we'll ease back off that. And then we're going to stretch it out a little bit further. So let's now take that front foot further in front. So you can see my knees now behind the ankle. And I'm starting to bring my bricks into play now. So we're heading into a posture called Hanuman Asana, which means the splits. Hanuman's a monkey god. So the splits are pretty intense and not going to be for everyone. So only go as far as your body is happy to go. I've got the props and um, I definitely won't be doing full splits. But, you know, it's about the journey. We're just working towards where we can. So I'm getting this big opening in my left leg. I'm going to creep my right foot forwards and just see where I'm happy to go. My left leg is sliding back a little bit now. And I'm going to lift my front right toes as I go a little bit deeper into the pose. And today that feels enough for me. So you can see I'm still quite high off the ground, but I'm getting a very strong opening here. If you're quite lowish, you could use a brick and prop it underneath that right head of the thigh. So once I've done that and I've got some support, you know, I can take my hands up, I can be more upright. But, you know, don't have the bricks in that sort of profile because they're a little bit too unstable. You need to breathe. This is fairly intense to come out. I'm going to put my hands back down, slide that right foot back in. Oh, goodness me, we're going to take the right leg back. And then from here, we're going to have a rest in our child pose. So either supporting the head on the hands or coming down a little lower, head to floor, but find your comfy child pose. Soften. It's always nice to let go. All right, let's come back to hands and knees. So you might want to give that right leg a little shake out, depending on how it felt. And we'll go over to our left lunge. So left foot up to the hands. And remember, I want the hip ahead of the knee. I'm looking to open up here into the quad and the hip flexor. So I'm easing, you can feel, put your hands a little higher on bricks if that feels better. And we're just allowing that space to open, soften, my front knee's still over my ankle here. And then from this position, let's press through that left foot, inhale, open up, so palms up, elbows soft, relax the shoulders down and back. Think of easing that left hip back a little bit. So as we take the left hip back, this right hip eases forwards. I'm broadening into my ribs and chest. And then we'll take the hands back to the floor. So now take note, where is that heel? We're going to shift the foot, a whole foot back. 
So my toes are where my heel was. And then support your weight through your hands. That's important because we're putting a bit more pressure on the knee joint. And now let that knee go past the toes. And ideally what we're looking for is a little bit more opening through the calf Achilles heel. So I've got my heel extending onto the floor. And then we'll ease back out. Now we take it that little bit further. So big step forwards. And this could be plenty, this could be enough already. So I've got my supports here ready to go. Then I'm gonna walk my front foot a little further forwards. I'm letting my right knee slide back a little further. Then I, when you get to a certain uh, distance apart, you'll find that it's easier to lift the toes and we stretch it out, sitting down. Now you may find that you could put a support underneath the head of that thigh there. So it's just off the sit bones and then you can come upright. It's one of those postures where when you can do the full pose and you've got yourself flat on the floor, it's actually much easier. It's the getting there that's the tricky bit. And you might find one side's easier than the other. So this left side's much more comfortable than my right side. Check that you're not gritting the teeth. Whenever you've had enough, please come out because this is really intense. So now I'm gonna bring my hands back down, take my support out, walk my left foot back in. Oh, hands to floor, big step back. And then we'll come back into our child pose and let that go. Nice and soft. All right, inhale, let's come back to hands and knees and we'll just do a little stretch to open up a bit more through our shoulders and chest. We're going to keep the hips directly over the knees and then hands will come further forwards. If possible, resting forehead on the floor, sinking chest down. If that's too strong, again, you can use your hands to support your head a little higher. But I, I'm sort of extending back with my hips as I lengthen through the crown of the head. But the hips are staying over the knees. So this is like a hanging cat stretch. All right, let's come back in. Walk the hands back in. And we're actually gonna curl the toes under and roll back onto our heels. So let's peel the knees off the floor. Walk the hands back, feet are hip width apart. Knees are soft, and then from here, soften the knees even more, take the gaze forwards. Inhale, open up the chest, arms out wide, and we make our way up. <sighs> All right, how are those legs feeling? So well, let's take the blanket, if you used a blanket, we'll take it off the mat. And we're gonna do something called the wood chopper's breath. So this is quite active. If you're prone to vertigo, this is not a great one to do. You're not going to hang all the way down. So please modify to suit you today. Again, high blood pressure, you've got to be a little careful with this one as well. So I've got my feet wider than hip width. I'm going to keep the knees really soft. So this is the front view. And I'm just going to you know, interlock the hands. It's like I've got a, an ax. I take a beautiful deep breath in, and then on the exhale, keeping the knees bent, I'm gonna do a big <sighs> out through the mouth and just flop back down. And then I breathe and I come back up. So to give you a sideways view, we're gonna do this three times. Nice deep breath in, exhale. <sighs> so it's out through the mouth, big exhale. Let's breathe in, nice and slow coming up. Big exhale out. <sighs> just hand. We've got one more. Inhale, coming up. Knees stay bent. All right, big exhale. And release the hands. All right, 
we'll roll it back up. So that's really good just for getting rid of stale air from the lungs and uh, you know just clearing things out a little bit. Now we'll move into warrior number one. So we're going to stand towards the back of the mat facing the short end of the mat. I've got the feet on two train tracks so they're parallel they're about hip width apart. Turn your left foot just slightly out just a little bit and then step the right foot making sure you keep it on that right side of the mat. So when we put the hands on the pelvis it should be comfortable to be able to fully face the top of the mat there with the hips and the shoulders. So let's breathe in, extend up through the arms, keep the front knee bent and reach down through your back left heel. So you should be hopefully feeling a nice extension from the heel through the calf, back of the knee and the back of the thigh there. You can either have the gaze between the hands or gaze straight ahead, but you know, relax those shoulders down. This is our standard warrior one pose. So imagine reaching or extending that energy from that back heel all the way up now through the fingertips. And then we'll release the hands back down and we're going to step forwards to come out. Okay, so we'll shuffle back, back to our hip width. We're going to turn the right foot just slightly out. As we step the left foot forwards, keep it on the left side of the mat. Front knee's just bent over the ankle and we're looking to really reach down through that back right heel. So check that your foot hasn't turned off because then you're going to lose that opening that we want through the back of the leg. So hands on the pelvis. Check that we can comfortably bring it to face the short end of the mat. Shoulders are also there. And then next breath in, let's take the arms up, maybe gaze up or straight ahead. The shoulders relaxed. And we keep reaching down through that back heel as we stretch out through the fingertips. So my back right knee is lifted. I'm drawing up through the thigh, through the kneecap. And I'm feeling that really good extension down through the back of that right leg. Okay, we're going to take the hands back down and step forwards to come out and loosen off. So now we'll go lengthways on our mat and we'll be turning the right foot out. So if I put my right foot in the middle and take my left foot back and that foot's also in the middle, so feet are roughly lined up, and then turn my left heel a little bit more away so the foot's got a bit of an angle. We'll soften into that front right knee so it's not going past the ankle joint there. And then breathing the arms out. So roughly hands balanced over the feet. And if you feel you can, you can always creep it out a little bit more with that front foot and sink down a little bit deeper. And check that you're not leaning over that front right leg. So I want to be balanced with my shoulders over the pelvis. We're going to look down the right arm and we want that sense of opening in the front of the chest but also that broadness in the back of the shoulders. So from here let's reach the left arm back to wall reverse warrior. So I've turned the palm and I'm taking the gaze into the palm but keeping the legs nice and strong. And then we'll come back to our center, release the arms, and we're going to transfer over to our left side. So let's pivot that left foot out 90 degrees and make sure that you've got the feet roughly lined up again. So I'm going to readjust, turn that right foot slightly in, and then soften into my left knee. Okay, breathe the arms out over the feet, shoulders relaxed. Turn the gaze, look down the left hand and get that sense of broadness opening in the chest. So we're also looking to open that inner left thigh. So think of that extension opening from the inner thigh and spiral that back to the outer knee. So from here, let's take our right leg to the right, right arm to the right leg, 
turn the left hand towards the ceiling and we're in our reverse warrior. And release, come back to our center. Relax the arms, we're gonna walk the feet in. Give them a little shake out. So back to our Tadasana. So angle pose is next. You could choose to use a brick or you could put your forearm on your thigh or you could choose not to use a brick. Any of those options. If you like a brick, we're gonna place it next to the ankle or the heel. Big step back, so same setup with the feet that we just had for warrior number two. And then we'll soften into that front knee. So now we're gonna be leaning over this front leg. We can go maybe a little bit longer, a little bit deeper. Let's inhale, both arms out, shoulders relaxed. On the exhale, glide over the right leg. And then your choice, you can either put the forearm on the thigh, hand down to the brick. You could take the arm behind, but don't be tempted to collapse to the floor. So we're gonna lift open and then sweep the top over, um, across, and we create our diagonal line. So I'm trying to work my knee back to the middle toes, check it's not going to the big toe. Press down through that left foot, keep the foot nice and flat, steady breath. And then to come out, we're gonna sweep the arm down, inhale strong and release. Okay, pivot to our left side. So if you like the brick, take it over. Make sure your right foot's now turned slightly in because we've got to let the hips have movement. And if I've got it that way, it sort of makes me a little bit stuck. So soften into the left knee. Inhale the arms. Exhale, glide. And then either forearm, hand to brick, or arm behind, we're gonna sweep that top arm over and across. Relax the shoulders back. This backhand, I'm not resting it on anything. I'm using my core strength. But if you need to support your core, then come here into the supported position. So we always wanna make sure that the back is happy. So I'm really reaching down through my back right heel, really planting down through the foot, but at the same time extending out through my fingers. So this is my line of energy. Okay, top arm down, breathe it up, ha, and release. Let's walk the feet back in. Again, you can give the legs a little shake out. And we'll come into Uttanasana, our standing forward bend. So I'm using this as a rest, which means I want you to keep your knees soft. So feet are hip width. We're gonna fold from the hips. My spine is nice and straight. You can rest here or you can rest the belly on the thighs and hang and fold the arms. Okay, release the fingertips. Bend the knees a little bit deeper, look forwards, weight back through the heels, inhale, and we come straight back up. All right. Now, seeing that we've done a lot of opening for the, the back side of the legs here and the glute muscles, we're now gonna use that for the uh, posture, it's called chest to leg extension. Now this is where you may wanna have a couple of bricks or a chair. So if, you are, if you've got a chair, you could also use a bench, kitchen table, anything like that. And uh, your options are gonna be facing that, that chair, you're gonna have your right foot forwards, left foot back. So this is like our warrior one position, but the legs are gonna stay straight for this. So for the chair, you'll be putting your hands on the chair. If you've got bricks, then you'll want the bricks set up either side of that front foot. If you've only got one brick, then you can you know, have it more underneath the chest that way. But if you've got two, it's quite nice to have one for either hand. So I'm gonna show you uh, with several options. And 
we want to make sure that with this stance we've got the right foot, right foot forwards and we've got that sort of two train tracks one foot on each train track so I've got that hip width I can face the short end of my mat alrighty so press down through the legs press down through the feet feel the whole foot in contact with the floor especially reach down through the left heel so I'm drawing now strongly up through these thigh muscles through these knees we're going to put the hands here on the top of the pelvis relax the shoulders out and back and lift and lengthen through the front of the body now we want to fold from these hip creases so as I press down through my left foot I'm just slowly going to ease forwards I'm trying to keep my spine nice and straight legs are strong and then we'll get to a point where either you're going to put your hands on your chair we're going to bring those bricks underneath the shoulder joints and we're going to hold it here so make sure that you're not sort of already in a lot of discomfort but you should be feeling some form of a, a stretch so I'm trying to watch what I'm doing with my hips there's a few things that can go off some people kick their hip out to the side so it's my right hip going to right other people will take it too far across and drop it so I want to try and keep it pretty neutral shoulders also level and as we spend a bit of time here you might find that you can take your supports a little lower so if you're using a chair maybe you can get the forearms to the chair we can reach a little further back but the key is keeping the spine long so I want to sort of avoid this rounding into the spine so I want to open up the chest check that I can breathe now I'm sure you've probably had a little bit of enough time here but we're going to go a little further if we can so bend the front knee and it's like oh that feels so much better but what we're going to do is with the knee bent see if we can draw this right hip or right buttock across a little bit to the left and squeeze with these outer hips and notice how with that knee bend I was able to keep my spine long but get a little lower so you know I can even touch the floor now and if you've got a chair you might need to shift it further away you can hold further down but we're going to go a little bit further into this pose and it's not with a bent knee so let's take a breath in lengthen through the spine and then on the exhale can we stay in this new position we might not be able to but straighten again into that right leg and if it's too much bring the hands higher and draw back so this is really really working through this whole right leg very intense pose chest to leg extension full expression is placing the forehead on the shin so if that feels like it's available to you, you could go there, you could bring that right hand behind and draw the body down. Okay, from here, bend the front knee, bring the gaze up. So again, you can bring the bricks into play or the chair into play. And then we're actually going to step forwards to come out. So if you're down closer to the floor, stepping forwards, knees are soft. Breathe in, keep the knees soft. Oh, and if you're not feeling that in your right buttock and right thigh, um, I'd be surprised. So go for a little walk around your mat, just loosen that off. So you're going to feel really, really lopsided. Very, very intense sensation, that one okay we're ready for the left side so let's start with the bricks high if you use the bricks we'll turn them up and uh, you know maybe bring your chair back in a bit if you were using a chair we're going to take the left foot forwards right foot's back but remember we've got the train tracks so feet are you know I've sort of almost got them lined up with the leg chair chair legs that sounds better okay straight legs so press down through the back foot see how I haven't got my foot turned off I have the 
toes pointing to the top of my mat. So that's important. And that's going to keep my hips a little bit more neutral. All right, draw up the thigh muscles, the kneecaps. Place the hands on the pelvis here. Start to hinge from the hip creases. So I'm trying to keep the integrity of my back. I'm not rounding into my spine. I'm taking my shoulders back, keeping this little natural curve as much as I can as I ease forwards. And then either place the hands on the supports, whatever supports you have. I do love the chair. Chair's always really nice. Preferably not a chair with wheels though. You don't want it rolling away from you. <laughs> Okay, from here, let's think of the left hip, left buttock lifting up and across a little bit to the right. And we breathe. We just allow a little bit of time to get that opening. And then we may be able to go a little deeper. So move the props down. Keep pressing through that back right heel, front foot. Watch that you're not rolling to the little toe side of your front foot. So really press down behind the big toe there on the, the um, mound. Now, best bit, we get to bend the knee. Sink a little lower. So maybe change the position of the hands. And then, Again, think about that left buttock, right buttock moving into the midline of the body. So I'm squeezing with these outer hips. And I've brought my rib cage much closer to my left thigh now. It'd be really nice if we could keep that upper body connection with the thigh as we straighten into the left leg. But if it's not possible, bring the hands up higher, back onto your supports. So we take a breath in, lengthen, and then on the exhale, let's see if we can straighten into that left leg. And if it's too intense, just bring those supports back, come a little higher. So remember, we don't want to be gritting our teeth too much. And again, notice, is one side different to the other? So you'll see on this side, I'm quite happy to have my hands on the floor, whereas the other side, you know, I tended to come a little bit higher because there is a difference in my sides. And if you want, last little bit, you could place hand behind that left shin, draw the forehead towards that leg. You could put the forehead on the shin if you wish. All right, breathe in, gaze forwards. Now we're gonna bend the knee to come out. It's just a little kinder on the back to do that. So bring the hands higher, bring the head higher, and let's do a nice strong push up through those legs. Oh my goodness, we're gonna step forwards. <sighs> Go for a little walk around the mat, loosen that off. So I'm really feeling that in my left glute muscles now. That was uh, really nice strong stretches today in those legs. Okay, so let's just shake it out a little bit. We have one more standing pose. This is a balance. So we're gonna be doing the dancer pose. Now you could use a strap around the foot. So if it's a little bit hard to hold onto the foot, you can hook a strap around. Um, you can also use a wall. So if you've got a wall or again a chair, you could hold onto that as, as we do this pose. So we're gonna be balancing on our right foot to start off with and we're taking the left foot behind. So you can either hold the outer ankle or you can turn the palm up and hold the inner ankle which gets the shoulder back a little bit more. Personal preference, I don't mind which way you do it. I'm just gonna give you an angle view. So steady gaze. So rather than looking at the camera, I'm gonna to look to what's in front. Press down through my right foot. I'm gonna grab hold of my left foot. 
and then I'm trying to keep my knees nice and close together, hips forwards, you can take that right arm up or hold on to the wall or your support. We want to keep the spine nice and long. Now the action's got to come from our left leg. So we're going to lift and push that left foot up and away. And that's what drives the body forwards. But I'm not trying to collapse to the ground. I'm trying to keep my chest open, gaze forwards. And I keep whoa, lifting and pushing my left foot up and away and if you fall out just get back in give it another go we keep breathing reaching out and then we'll come back out release and relax okay nice little shake out I quite like a little twist after that one so it's actually a little bit of a back bend in this pose so it's always nice to do a bit of a twisting motion after a back bend. Other side. So I'm going to press down through my left foot, steady my gaze, and then reach around, hold on to my right foot, if I can get it. This side's my tricky side. There we go. Okay, and then left arm up, either holding onto the wall or your support. Ah, and I've lost it. Okay, and then I'm trying to bring my knees close to each other. Again, I find this side trickier because my knee's quite tight on this side. Hence the little tightness in the hips as well. Okay, so we should be feeling a good quad stretch. And then let's start to push that right foot up and away. Keep breathing, keep the gaze steady. Reaching out. As I lift and push a little more with that right foot, that's what brings me slightly forwards. Still breathing. And to come back out, ease back off. Bring that leg back down. Again, knees soft. And let's go for a nice little swing. Lovely. That was our last standing posture. So from here, we're going to make our way back down to the floor and the next pose, I'm going to give you choices because um, some of you may like to try Kapalabhasana, skull shining pose, but a lot of you, that's not going to be a great pose for you. So I'm going to show you the alternative first. A chair can be nice as an option or a bench anything like that. So if I'm using a chair, I'm just going to come down onto my knees and you might want to grab a brick. So alternative is to put your elbows on the bench or the chair, have the brick between the hands like so, and then I shuffle back and rest my forehead on the edge of the chair, brick overhead, trying not to have a skew if. So that's one option. Another option is, and that's going to work strongly on your shoulders, our dolphin dog. So elbows on the floor, we did this last week, and you're letting the head hang. Now you can come in and out of either of those postures or practice both at any time. For those who want to give skull shining pose, this is putting weight through your head. So any problems with your neck, do not do this pose. It's strong on the shoulders, so be mindful of that. Any problems with blood pressure, can't have pressure through the eyes, pregnant, etc., do not do the next pose. So one of the options, our last one, is to start from a child position. I've got two mats here, so a nice little bit of padding for the head. So if you've only got one, uh, Matt, you might want to fold it up a little bit more. So I'm going to bring weight to the very centre of the head. So I place my forehead on the ground and then I roll to the top. Now you can see my hands and my head have created a triangle, elbows in, elbows stacked over wrists. I then tuck the toes, lift the knees. I'm going to walk my knees, place them on my elbows and then feet will come off the floor. 
And that's it. When I come down, feet down first, walk back, knees down, rolling onto the forehead, and then I'm going to rest in my child. So if you want to give that another go, either come back to dolphin, or doing that on a chair, or we place the hands in front of the knees, forehead to floor, roll to the top of the head, elbows above wrists, lift the knees, walk the feet in, separate them out so you can get the knees directly over your backs of the arms, and then press down, feet up. Only stay as long as you are comfortable. Bear in mind that is not for everyone. Feel free to skip that bit. You can always fast forward. Rest. And let's slowly come up. So quite a strong inversion that one if you're not used to doing it. We're going to then roll onto our backs. So everyone can do the next one. And we're coming into bridge pose. So we want our feet hip width apart. We're gonna have the arms down beside the body. And just check that we're comfortable. Let's just do a little loose neck roll. So if anyone who did the previous skull shunning pose, you just wanna relax those neck muscles. Now with our bridge, we wanna make sure we've got that space under the neck, but also space in the front of the throat. We'll press down through the feet, breathe in, start to lift the hips, back comes off the floor, and we keep the shoulders down. Again, check that we've got that space at the front of the throat, back of the neck. Nice, easy breathing. This is a little bit more calming than our skull shining pose. So working back strength, leg strength. And also sending the blood more towards the throat here. All right, we're gonna roll back down. Little rest. So I got one more of those to go. Let's breathe in, lift up. So in the throat here, we have thyroid and parathyroid glands. And they're the glands that govern our metabolism, take of calcium in the body. And it's our throat center for the Shuddhi chakra, our seat of communication. So maybe press down through those feet and see if we get just a little bit more lift. And then on the exhale, release the spine nice and slow to the floor. <sighs> Relax the legs and let it go. Hopefully have that nice sense of release. Now we really didn't do a lot of twisting today, so we'll just do a very gentle little twist. You can bend the knees again. We'll start with a little roll side to side. And then let's roll both legs over to the right. And just pushing through that left foot so that the left hip lifts up a little bit, but shoulders stay on the floor. Come back to our center, release to the left, and then pushing down through that right foot, lifting the hip up a little bit more into the twist. And release. And if you like, both knees in towards the chest, and we have that nice little massage, whatever feels good. And today 
We're going to have a yoga nidra practice, so we're not doing a formal pranayama so much. So make yourself comfortable, put something warm on, and you can do this in a chair, but you know, I always quite like lying down. If you're not familiar with the yoga nidra practice, all I'm going to do is name parts of the body and you just need to take your awareness to those parts of the body. Repeat it mentally to yourself. Try and feel those parts from the inside. But at the same time, you want to resist the urge to move. <laughs> that can be the hard bit. Okay, so comfortable position. And feeling the floor beneath you. Just observing the connection points between yourself and the ground. And I'm mentally thinking to yourself, I will not sleep. I'll practice yoga nidra and stay alert to the practice. So be aware of the sounds in the room that you're lying in and the sounds that are outside. What's the most distant sound that you can be aware of? Bringing that awareness of sound back in closer to the body. Aware of the physical body in connection with the floor. Aware of the natural breath. And if you have a resolve, an intention that you'd like to make for yourself now, then repeating that resolve three times. And now moving your awareness down to your right hand Thumb. So feel the right hand thumb and feel the second finger, third, fourth, fifth. Palm of the hand, back of the hand, the wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, right thigh, knee, calf, ankle, heel, soul, top of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third, fourth, fifth. Feel your left hand thumb, the second finger, third, fourth, fifth. Palm of the hand, back of the hand, the wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, left thigh, knee, calf, ankle, heel, sole, top of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third, fourth, fifth. Feel both feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, buttocks, lower back, middle back, upper back, the whole spine. 
both shoulder blades, shoulders, back of the neck, back of the head, top of the head, forehead, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, eyebrow center, right eyelid, left eyelid, right eye, left eye, right ear, left ear, right cheek, left cheek, nose, tip of the nose, right nostril, left nostril, upper lip, lower lip, chin, jaw, throat, right collarbone, left collarbone, right chest, left chest, middle of the chest, navel, abdomen, groin, the whole right leg, the whole left leg, both legs together. The whole right arm, whole left arm, both arms together. Whole of the back, whole of the front, whole of the head together. The legs, arms, back, front and head together. The whole body together. Awareness of the whole body and aware of the body relaxed, calm and still. Whole body relaxed. Take the awareness back to your right hand thumb. Second finger, third, fourth, fifth. Palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, right thigh, knee, calf, ankle, heel, sole, Top of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third, fourth, fifth. Feel the left hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth. Palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, left thigh, knee, calf, ankle, heel, sole, top of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third, fourth, fifth. Feel both feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, buttocks, lower back, middle back, upper back, the whole spine, shoulder blades, shoulders, back of the neck, back of the head, top of the head, forehead, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, eyebrow center, right eyelid, left eyelid, right eye, left eye, right ear, left ear, right cheek, left cheek, nose, tip of the nose, right nostril, left nostril, upper lip, lower lip, chin, jaw, throat, right collarbone, left collarbone, right chest, left chest, middle of the chest, navel, abdomen, groin, whole right leg, left arm, whole left leg, right arm, whole of the back, whole of the front, whole of the head, together, legs, arms, back and front and head, together, the whole body, together. Be aware of the whole body. 
aware of the body relaxed, calm and still. Whole body relaxed. Have that awareness of the natural breath in and out through the nose. As you follow the breath from the tip of the nose down into the lungs, back up from the lungs out through the tips of the nose, start to count each breath backwards from 21 down to 1. So you might want to think 21 breathing in, 21 breathing out, and then 20 breathing in, 20 breathing out. Keep counting down each breath. If you lose the count or you get to one, start again at 21. Letting go of the counting of the breath. Having that awareness of the whole body connected to the earth. Feeling the weight of the body against the ground. Having that sense of heaviness in the body. Feeling those connection points between yourself and the ground expanding as the body becomes heavy. And then begin to awaken a sense of lightness in the body. Feel yourself becoming lighter and lighter as the body contact points shrink with the earth. Have that sense of lightness in all parts of the body. Whole body is light. Letting go of that sense of lightness, feel the body once more in connection with the floor. Being aware of the breath, moving gently through the nose. And being aware of the various sounds 
that are in the room around you and maybe outside the room. sighing out through the mouth, letting that breath go, and then adding some gentle movement into the fingers and into the toes, slowly waking up the arms and the legs, the brain, and beginning to move the body in any way that is comfortable to do so. Gently opening the eyes, blinking them a few times. And then when you're ready, rolling over to the right hand side. And when it feels right, using your hands to bring you up to a seated position. And this week I have a quote from Adol Palkavala. I've probably pronounced that incorrectly. He says, true yoga is not about the shape of your body, but the shape of your life. Yoga is not to be performed. Yoga is to be lived. Yoga doesn't care about what you have been. Yoga cares about the person you are becoming. Yoga is designed for a vast and profound purpose. And for it to be truly called yoga, its essence must be embodied. So yoga is about self-discovery, not just the physical, but the mental and the emotional. So, you know, when I ask you in those strong stretches, you know, where is the mind? That is part of the yoga practice. So we'll bring our hands together. Namaste. Have an excellent rest of your week. And uh, stay well, stay happy. Bye.